Hey everyone, and welcome back to Accelerated Evolution's Let's Play of Mega Man X2. I'm the Akari Warrior, and if my voice seems a little bit different this time, I'm, I must be still getting over that cold. Oh, <coughs> Boy, that's messed me up for a little while. But that kind of thing wouldn't stop your good old friend, the Akari Warrior, from fighting the Morph Moth. Now, some of you may remember that I referred to this level as one of the more difficult ones, and uh, I'm still going to hold true to that. Now here you can see a sprite reused from Mega Man X1 that no one cares about and I have way too much information on. Throughout the Junkyard stage, we see a lot of these flying robots. They work in a somewhat similar manner to the flying robots in X1's intro stage, where they have two parts, and if you go underneath them, they'll use a downward attack. This is information of course is completely useless. So since no one else seems to bother getting into the upgrades, well good old Akari is gonna have to do something for you. Let's go ahead and grab one. Hey there Dr. Light, why are you feeling so blue? <laughs> Here Dr. Light gives us the upgraded X body armor. As you can see, it has a new ability, which will allow you to destroy all enemies on the screen, and it's going to demonstrate that for us really quickly. Way to use up all my energy, Mega Man! Anyways, as it said, as we take damage, it's going to continue to power up that weapon. And we'll probably use it a lot because I'm so terrible at this video game. Even though I just say, hey, I'm going to power on through and then get hit by every enemy in every section, you know, as some sort of justification for my terrible playing, right after insulting leading man. So anyways, these robots, you can see, are protected by a shield and have an attack somewhat similar to the Castlevania Axe Knights. Now see this leading man? This is called dash jumping! You should practice it! <laughs> Whoa! Don't lose your head! Now we're coming up on the first two mini-bosses for this level. They start off as some sort of captured alien-like moth being that jumps inside robots and controls them to attack you. Now as you can see, um... I, you have to damage the midsection, and, um... Oh, for some reason my buttons don't seem to be working. Um, but that's okay, because I'm not terrible at this game or anything. Oh man, this guy is so gosh darn hard. Gee, got your golly willikers, Batman! So difficult! Anyways, you can use the flame wheel attack to take him out almost instantaneously. Now that's what I call a bug zapper. One of the great features of this level is that it's very easy to fill your E-Tank. You'll see what I mean, pretty much all damage is completely negligible, considering that all over this place are these little energy pellets. Another feature of this stage is the fact that there's these gravity lifts that will continue to change the direction of your jumping, somewhat similar to having a swim effect. Unfortunately, one of the downsides of this is that it can also reverse the gravity and cause your jumps to be a little bit shorter and you take damage. As long as you take this hallway slowly, there shouldn't be really any major problems. Now these little construction worker bots that look somewhat similar to the miners in Mega Man X1 if you don't it's destroy them in one shot, they will actually rebuild themselves, and the pieces will come flying in from all directions and may actually attack you. Uh-oh, looks like another mini-boss. Guess we'll have to send him back to the trash pile. Again. Now, we could continue doing this the losery, stupid way, but instead, let's just do it the fast way. Wow, you don't have to fall to pieces about it or anything. Here's our friend again, with a couple more attacks, he's dead. Let's 
See, here's another section where you can just get tons and tons of energy. I remember exploiting this as a kid because I needed to have all my E-Tanks filled because I'm terrible at video games. Here's a simple way to get rid of this guard. So we'll put the flame wheel and we could listen to the gate opening and closing sound and then maybe comment on the history of it, but I guess we already did that in a previous video now, didn't we? Now this guy. Oh, this gosh darn shucky bad guy. Now when you begin the fight, he's only vulnerable to the flame wheel when he's not in the fire or the little black altered charge states. After a couple hits, he'll head to the ground again churning up some garbage from the floor. And he's pretty much invulnerable during this attack. Now from here, you have to dash jump over his attack. This is something I'm sure leading man could never do. <laughs> Am I right guys? Tired joke? Of course, that jump's made a lot easier if you actually have the leg upgrades, but this seems to be a pretty much no upgrade run because no one wants to be bothered. Once we've gotten down to about half health, he actually turns into the real boss and then starts sparkling down magic gay fairy dust. Now you can actually catch him in pretty much an infinite loop at this point, or if you want to, you can hug the left wall and the damage will never apply. Well, like a moth drawn to a flame, his hiney is toast. Hit, 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 hit. As you can see, the explosion is a little bit longer on the Super Nintendo, and the audio to sync with X's little ching doesn't occur. Alright, we've gained the... Silk Shot, which only slightly resembles four exploding turds. And of course, here's your password, Samurai Goomba. Now go out there and get stomped on by a U.S. soldier from Brooklyn. <laughs>